Former Murphy Oil CEO Claiborne Deming has always been pretty reserved in his comments in previous interviews I've conducted with him through the years. He had to be, as investors and analysts would hang on every word he uttered and how it might impact Murphy's bottom line or its stock performance. Now that he's no longer the top executive for the El Dorado-based oil and gas company, he's feeling free to say what he really thinks. I traveled to El Dorado recently to sit down with Deming, who shared his highly opinionated and controversial thoughts on the Waxman-Markey energy bill being considered by Congress. And so if, when you think about it, what the bill really is, is two things to me. One, it's political payback. Uh, a, a group's in power in Congress, and they have certain groups they want to reward. And so they're rewarding a heavily unionized heavy industry. Uh, they're, they're, they're rewarding certain politically powerful utilities, big lobbying groups and, uh, and big Washington uh, offices. Uh, so that's what's one, and they're, and, they're, and they're harming the oil and gas industry, which they view as an enemy and they don't like. Uh, so it's old fashioned, wonderful political payback. Reward your friends and harm your enemies. Uh, so that's a big piece. And then the other piece, which is, which is uh, the way, it, is, is they want to impose a lifestyle change on Americans. I mean, let me tell you a few things in this bill. Uh, they're going to require that all new buildings um, starting in 2012 are 30 percent more energy efficient. Residents, both residences and businesses, 2015, 50 percent more energy efficient. So you know what that building looks like? Do you want to live in a building like that right away? That's what they want to do. There's, a, there's another piece in it. When they, when they allocated these free carbon permits, they went to a low-income segment of America, and they gave them 15% of all the carbon permits. This is when this thing gets up and going, if there's a vibrant carbon market, hundreds of billions of dollars. And that's going to be given to a low-income segment, either as a direct electronic funds transfer or a credit to your taxes. And so it's one of the biggest increases in transfer payments uh, since probably Social Security. You'd never know it from the title of the act and from the fact that it's supposed to address climate change. Uh, that's included in it. The bill doesn't promote nuclear power. The only scalable way to generate power that's non-carbon sourced is nuclear power. We already generate 20% of, of the power in America by nuclear power. France is 80%. If you're serious about climate change, if you think it's really a problem, you have to use nuclear power as a way to generate electricity. And windmills and solar are just a, uh, it's a sideshow. It embarrasses me as an American. You know, the Dutch first used wind power in the 14th, 15th century. Um, and now we're back doing that again. It's not scalable. It mars the landscape. Why does that embarrass you? Uh, because as an, as, an, as an industrial, sophisticated society, we ought to make rational choices about America's future and use our precious resources reasonably and rationally. And covering the Midwest with windmills to generate power when there's no transmission grid there and when the wind doesn't blow all the time and when it doesn't scale, you have to, have to keep adding more and more thousands of them to generate power when you could build one nuclear power plant and you could replace so much of that with, with technology that currently exists? I mean, it's an embarrassment that as a society, we've reached that point where we think that's the answer. It's, and of course, it's all subsidized. I haven't gone, it's for the tax, because it doesn't, it can't compete. So we as taxpayers are subsidizing windmills and solar arrays in the Southwest uh, or soak up water in a part of the world that desperately needs water. I mean, what they've learned when they start building these things and put them in, they just have water out of the kazoo to operate them properly. And now they're rethinking that because the water's not available because we need it for plants and humans. And so the unintended effects of this, of subsidizing um, thing, sources of energy which aren't competitive, uh, and not subsidi are not encouraging the use of, of, uh, of fuels which wouldn't be quite as carbon intensive as coal, for example, natural gas. One thing we've learned in the last five years through technology and horizontal drilling and a different type of reservoir shale is now reservoir rock. It's revolutionary in our business. Natural gas is everywhere. 
I mean, it's a got about 50% of the carbon intensity or even less than, than coal does. Why not encourage that? Bill doesn't address that. What is I, your prediction for what will happen in the Senate and where it goes? Don't know. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be close. Uh, because I think that the, that the uh, majority party has got 60 votes now. And it's a big time agenda item for them. Uh, and they want to cram through this, this, uh, this change in lifestyle before Americans really know about it. If they knew it was in the bill, they would turn it away immediately. I mean, if you're serious about climate change, put a carbon tax on gasoline, for example. Call it a carbon tax, let the government get the money. But they are um, fearful of the issue because they know Americans don't want a tax on fuel. And so they disguise it with this cap and trade bill. And before we understand it's a really a tax, they're going to, want to cram it through us. Now think about this hypocrisy. The price of gasoline goes up last year because crude oil went up. They bring a bunch of oil company executives in front of, they excoriate them and embarrass them. Of course, they can't control the oil markets. 80% of all the oils in the Middle East, for Christ's sake, controlled by national governments. They excoriate these people. Price of oil goes down. They secretly hate low gasoline prices because that means people are going to drive more. So the cap and trade bill is a way to artificially increase the price of gasoline, which is what they really want. And so they're going to be responsible for increasing the price of gasoline after excoriating these oil company executives who were not responsible for it, but they could come up with a political blame game. You know what I call that? I call that hypocrisy to the max. How about Harry Reid, senator from Nevada? Yucca Flats was a $10 billion investment by the federal government to put radioactive spent waste under a mountain in Nevada. Get rid of it instead of storing it on site at different plants where it is right now. But even though Harry professes he believes in climate change, he shut Yucca Flats down when he became head of the Senate. Not in my backyard. So, yeah. So how real is that? How honest is that? How big to be a head of the Senate proposing some way to address climate change and not list the one energy source which will absolutely address it, no questions asked, almost shut it down where you can't build the new nuclear plant. I call it dishonest and I call it hypocritical. Do you believe in climate change? You know what I believe? I think they use models that are extremely sophisticated and are all based on inputs and data that they make projections on. And I challenge anyone, me, you, uh, the guy behind the camera, uh, anybody to go out there and say, you know, I understand that. I understand that model, and I, and I can see where the predictions are going to be. Uh, so what I say is I think there's likely changes going on, um, but how severe, what the different interactions between oceans and clouds and, and vapor and water is going to be and what the, I don't think anybody knows. And so when there's that much uncertainty involved in it, to come in here and, and literally cripple the American economy when you're not going to impact the, the problem at all, or just a little bit on the margin maybe, is ridiculous. It's horrible public policy. It's got a dishonest streak because you're not calling it a tax, and it is. And you're trying to sneak it by the American people without them knowing it, so it even compounds the dishonesty. That's what I think.